doctor prescribed superhero comes home to Mrs. Jordan. She's, uh, she's the head of the household. In some ways, she, she, uh, she, I am kind of afraid of her. She's the boss? She's the boss. But she don't make jump shots. That's the difference. That's the difference. <laughs>
While to the public, Jordan may be the world's greatest basketball player, at home, the legend gets benched. She's uh, she's the head of the household in some ways. She she uh, she, I am kind of afraid of her, but not not to the point where you know, I I won't go outside. I won't do anything. I just she runs the household. I must give her that. She's the boss. She's the boss. But she don't make jump shots. That's the difference. Jordan for three. Yes. While Jordan's heroics on the court are phenomenal, 63 points in a single playoff game. You might not know about his off-court heroics with underprivileged children. Despite a hectic schedule that rivals the president, don't look for a limo or a driver. This megastar likes to keep things simple. Off-season, he runs a basketball camp. You're afraid? Join the club. Come on over here. And with the help of his mother, Dolores, he runs the Michael Jordan Foundation, which serves needy kids in Chicago. Remember I saw you there? I was walking around with you. <laughs> Being involuntarily elected to the status of master role model has not been easy. It's a, it's, a, it's a heavy burden because they expect you to be the most perfect human being that you can be. And for a while, certainly I tried to do that. I tried to live the, that life of being the most perfect person. But I had to come to my senses. Hey, I'm just as human as anyone else. I oh, so when was the turning point? The turning point was the gambling. All the, the, the gambling incidents, you know, it illustrated that, hey, I made a mistake. Jordan's mistake? Mixing his lust for golf with heavy betting. Two years ago, it was revealed that Jordan had written checks totaling $165,000 to pay his gambling debts, including one to a convicted cocaine dealer he had golfed and gambled with. Although Jordan did not break the law or any NBA rules, the league reprimanded him for gambling with unsavory characters. The scandal tarnished Jordan's squeaky clean image and raised questions about his judgment. Actually, I was gambling unknowingly of this guy's background. Wouldn't you characterize another mistake in that incident, the fact that you said it was a loan in the beginning? I mean, because in the strictest yeah, I mean, sense of the word, Michael, that could be considered a lie. Right. A lie to me, you. Yeah, I mean, that would be considered a mistake. Gambling has cut short or even ruined a lot of professional sports careers. Can you give it up? Can I give up what? Gambling. Oh, sure. If it affects my life or the way I play the game or jeopardize my family or my financial status or whatever or the security of my family, sure, I give it up in a minute. To solidify my argument is, you know, whatever I've lost, I don't know why he would never, I, I shouldn't tell you this, but I will tell you. What have I lost, the, the 108, the 55, or whatever I've lost, I've always given it back to my wife. So whatever check I make, here, honey, I'm sorry for the embarrassment. I'm sorry for what I've caused for, you know, losing this amount of money. You know, here, take it. Do what you have to do with it. I wasted it. So this is yours. This is the kids. This is whatever. I didn't have to tell you that, but that tells me, and, I, and I'm sure that I'm not a gamaholic. I know where I am, I know what I'm doing, but if I feel I've done something that has embarrassed the family, I want to correct it, but yet I want to move on from it too as well. All right, I'm going to play shrink here, see? All right? Okay. And I'm supposed to play patient or what? <laughs> <laughs> when you said that you give your wife the 57000 or the 108000 that right. you lost, you know? That says to me, you feel guilty about it. I feel guilty that I did it and I actually didn't tell her I lost it. That's where the guilt comes from. Oh, you didn't tell her. No. But then when you do give her that money, you do tell her. <laughs> right. <laughs> but when you lost it, at the time you lost it. I was really embarrassed to tell anybody. Because <laughs> I lost. <laughs> That's the most embarrassing thing is that I lost. But well, I mean, I had to tell her because, I mean... She's the chief financial officer. Well, everything that comes in and leaves, she sees as well as myself. And you know, I don't want anything hidden from her. Even though I try to keep things from, you know, in a sense, uh, away from her. Because I know her. She's saying, no, oh, did you lose that much? I can't believe you lost that much. She's concerned that, hey, don't, don't make this a habit here. You know, which... I reassure you, honey, I can stop if you want, if it's bothering you or if it's something that's going to have us go opposite ways. Fine, I won't do it. 
and I've learned from from my wife's perspective <laughs> to bet ten, twenty, fifty dollars at the most. And that's it. That's it. Do you think you have a gambling problem at all? No. Because I can stop gambling. I have a competition problem. A competitive problem. Betting on anything from jump shots in practice to putts is common among athletes. They just aren't allowed to bet on their own sport. He's like my little devil on this side. I got an angel on this side. Every now and then I listen to him, every now and then I don't. So. Jordan's best friend, Charles Barkley of the Phoenix Suns, thinks Jordan trusts people too easily and is a target for opportunists. But these people not his friends? What people? The public in general. Oh, no! But you got to realize that, you know, everybody, he's a, obviously a great businessman for everybody, so everybody's his friend now. So when push comes to shove, they're not his friends. Opportunist is what Jordan's friends called this man, Richard Eskinas, who wrote and published a scathing bet and tell book at the height of the NBA playoffs. Eskinas, a California businessman who played golf with Jordan, claims they went on a betting spree, which ended with Jordan owing him $1.2 million. Eskinas charges Jordan with being an addictive, compulsive gambler. Michael and I got out of control wagering at levels that, uh, that shouldn't be wagered at for anybody, whether you're an athlete or not. On Monday, Eskinas met with NBA representatives to discuss the allegations in his book. I don't want to play commissioner, and I don't want to play the NBA, uh, but um, uh, Michael should be reprimanded for uh, gambling out of control. And what NBA rules did he break? To my knowledge, he, uh, again, I'm not the commissioner, but as I understand it, he did not break any rules because there's no rules against uh, uh, legalized gambling in casinos or on the golf course. So what should, what should Michael Jordan be reprimanded for? Well, uh, the league, I think, and the commissioner is concerned that maybe this gambling is spewing off into uh, other sports or other activities. Well, do you have any knowledge that it has spewed off into other sports or other I activities? have no concrete knowledge that it has. Eskinas says no he wrote the book as a friend that, um, to warn cars, Jordan that he had a serious cars, gambling cars. addiction. Oh, my hope was to maybe reach out to Michael and maybe he could see by, that by what I was going through, by what I had experienced, that maybe he could gain some insight into what impacts gambling and the situation that him and I went through. Look, no happened. friend would write a scathing book that is critical of a person's gambling problem, release it in the middle of playoffs at a critical time when the well, friend, quote-unquote, friend should sure. be concentrating on the game. Sure. Uh, the friendship had been betrayed by Michael long before that. Did you lose $1.2 million no. to Richard Esquina? No. No. How I, much did you lose? Three hundred thousand dollars is what I paid. Three hundred thousand dollars over a three-year period. And you paid it up? I paid it up. Um, actually, I was in the process of um, finishing off all the payments. But when he pulled this stunt, we never had a written agreement. I was more or less going off my honor, and I felt he dishonored me. So I don't owe him any more honor at all. So how much do you owe him? What's the, what was the remaining What's debt? What's the balance? Zero for my book. And I write a book on it. <laughs> he says in his book, at one point you said you may as well shoot as Kena says, pay him. Do you remember saying anything like that? Do I appear to be a violent person? I, I mean, I couldn't harm a fly, really. I said, Michael, I expect payment. And he says, I, I, I'd just as soon shoot you as pay you. Did you actually believe that Michael Jordan was capable of violence? Well, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't want to believe that that's true. And right now, as we speak, I don't know that Michael was capable of that kind of violence. But even in your book, I you hoped. said you didn't take it seriously. I said didn't take it seriously. I hoped. Uh, be, but I did take it to my therapist, who was very concerned about it. If you didn't take it seriously, why did you put it in your book? I, I took it to a level of seriousness, but not to the level that I was shaking in my, my, my sleep every night that Michael was going to come in and shoot me. Didn't you really want the publicity for the book and to make thousands of dollars on a blockbuster book? No, that was not the primary motive for the book. Was it one of the motives? Oh, I, I, if the book sells and does well, I'm a businessman. I hope it does. I hope it makes money. Jordan says he has learned well, two lessons, cool not to bet large amounts of money and to run a check on people before he lets them get too close. Credentials harder for people to get to get inside. How do you check them out? 
have an agency that, that checks them out. Seriously? Yeah. Like a, you know, was it like a detective agency? Something like that. I even had you checked out. Just kidding. Ooh. <laughs> I'm clean. <laughs> you are. That's why I'm doing the interview. <laughs> The, the thought has occurred that you aren't really gambling with money. You're gambling with your reputation. Gambling with your good name. What would they consider my good name? The purest of all pure? A person that doesn't make mistakes? Um, I'm not the perfect of all people. I do make mistakes. Just like any other person. I go to the bathroom just like any other person. Maybe it's time for other people to step in and live this lifestyle. I won't have a problem with that. I'm past that stage in my life that you know, I must live the perfect life. If that's what it takes, I'm not the man for you. Even superstars have wishes. The one thing Michael Jordan wishes for is the one thing his fans have taken away. Michael, if you were invisible, what would you do? Go to an amusement park with my kids. I haven't done that in I don't know how long. And I miss it. There's so many people there that you know, uh, it's, they would just invade on the time that I would try to give to my family. And I, that would be the, the number one thing I would do first. I asked Jordan if he resents the questions on gambling. His answer, yes and no. It is his private life, but he says he wanted to get the matter off his chest. He hopes he has put the gambling issue to rest, and Jordan says there are no outstanding debts that will turn up. Next, a serial killer.